This is Lisa from Mobile Tech Review, and like surprise, for those of you who didn't know that the Vio brand still exists, well, we have reviewed a couple of Vios since Sony actually sold off the brand several years ago, including the Vio Z Canvas, which was a really innovative Windows 10 tablet at the time with workstation CPU inside and a pen. Well, this one here is the Vio S, and Transcosmos Corporation owns the Vio brand. Now, they bought the Vio brand from Sony when Sony left the computer market, and they also took Sony's engineers, too. So you still got the same folks who brought you Vios of old working on these. Now, the Vio S isn't new. They actually had a previous generation. This is the update with Intel 8th generation quad-core CPUs inside. But, you know, this is really a particularly interesting one to review just after having done the Dell XPS 13 9370, which is the latest, greatest high-end Dell 13-inch um, ultra portable laptop. This one too is a conventional laptop. It doesn't do tablet-y things. It doesn't have 360 degree hinges. But the Sony engineer, former Sony engineers, did something similar to Dell. At least their goal was to improve the cooling inside to allow them to actually overclock the CPU a bit to get some more performance without generating too much heat or too much noise. And you know what? They really succeeded, which is pretty cool. Beyond that, this is as light as an LG gram. It's really pretty crazy. It is 2.34 pounds, which is 1.06 kilograms, yet you have all sorts of legacy ports on here. So this is like a laptop in the days when laptops were laptops, if you know what I mean. You have Ethernet, gigabit Ethernet on here. You have a G HDMI port, a VGA port, USB ports, everything. So you're not giving up a whole lot. And you've got a nice matte full HD display. It's geared towards business users. We'll talk about why that is, but it starts at $11.99. And if you're looking for a traditional laptop, keep watching. So I'll tell you, when I took this out of the box, I couldn't believe how light it was. It really is kind of uncanny. You know, you expect it with something, again, like the LG Gram, where they market that as being crazy light, and you give up a few things in return for that super lightness and thinness. But on this laptop, what are you giving up? You know, not really anything here. You've got a full set of ports. You even have a full-size SD card slot on here. Magnesium alloy bill. So magne magnesium alloy is pretty light. That certainly helps, but it's a fairly rigid laptop. It doesn't feel like some ultra light feel a little like you're pushing on tinfoil or something like that, you know, aluminum foil. It feels fairly sturdy. It's nice looking. It's modern. It's got this kind of wedge-shaped design, which is how they managed to get some of those legacy ports. The thicker ones on here have to be towards the rear. That makes total sense. It's got bezels that are not exactly super teeny inside, but not too bad either. You know, it's, it's, not bad looking. Now, one thing that will bother some of you is this hinge design. And they've been doing that for a while. It, it, they've got that one from Sony. So what it does is when you open it up, it raises the, the keyboard to a pleasant little angle for typing on. And there's two little rubber feet here, which I don't find drag on the table and make any nasty noises or anything like that. Nor when I use this on my legs do I find that this edge over here digs in, but some people don't like it. So I leave it up to you to decide if you're actually able to meet one of these in person before you buy it. In the United States, they're available at Micro Center. And these are, Vio also sells in other countries. I don't know which retailers carry them in person, though, if you wish to see them. The keyboard deck is magnesium alloy as well. And as a mix of very traditional appointments going with a modern design here, it, it all looks nice and modern. You've got your backlit keyboard, 1.2 millimeters of travel. It feels nice though, despite that low travel, it's really good damping. It's not a noisy keyboard board at all. I like typing on this, but the trackpad here actually has clickable buttons, which you don't see much anymore. You usually see a buttonless trackpad. So if you like that kind of thing, they're there. You can still tap to click if you want. One thing I'm not so fond of on this Microsoft Precision trackpad though, is the fact that it's a pretty small trackpad by today's standards. They're usually fairly large on most laptops. So I find that I'm a little further over than I think, and sometimes I'm actually doing a right-click tap because I've wandered around. So it takes a little adjustment. But other than that, the trackpad works fine. And there's a fingerprint scanner embedded on the keyboard deck. Now, again, Vio thinks of this as their business line product. They have ones that are a little more consumer focused. So what does that mean to them? It means things like, well, you get a fingerprint scanner, you get a full HD display, which is perfectly reasonable resolution at 13.3 inches. It's a matte, non-touch display. So if you want a touch screen, though, this one isn't for you. It's nice that it's matte, and it's nice that it's fairly high brightness, too, pushing 300 nits. So it's pretty easy to see. Again, it reminds me of laptops in the old days where you actually got matte screens that you could see in a variety of lighting situations. 
The other thing, they don't have USB-C. They don't have a 4K display option. Some of those things, I think USB-C, they really should have, even though they're like, oh, don't hit us for that one because we're a business laptop. I think business users would like to be a little forward thinking too. I can forgive the lack of Thunderbolt 3. That's not exactly taken the world by storm just yet in terms of peripherals and what's out there are kind of expensive docks and things like that. But that, I take points off for that. This has Qualcomm Atheros Wi-Fi, by the way, which works just fine. I'm fine with that. Um, the SSD and Wi-Fi modules are socketed. There's an empty socket where an LTE module looks like could go, but they don't mention that back, which is kind of interesting. And there, there is a SIM card slot on this one. And it comes with Windows 10 Pro. I guess going with the idea that this is for business users, that's the only option. Not home, just Pro. Now, this is available with a variety of SSDs. They're all PCIe NVMe, so they're fast. And boy, it did really benchmark really nicely for both read and write speeds. And we got a Samsung SSD in there. You can get it with 8 or 16 gigabytes of RAM. It's DDR3 low power. That is soldered on board. You can't upgrade that yourself. Now, they have what they call Vio True Performance, and this is supposed to give you better than average performance. Again, a lot like Dell with the XPS 13 9370, they've done, redone the thermals to be more effective as the idea to dissipate heat and to kind of keep noise under control at the same time, but it allows them to actually run it beyond the usual 15 watts that we see in these Ultrabook CPUs, be it Core i5-8250U or R Core i7-8550U. And you know what? It's been effective, I have to say. You can see the comparison benchmarks on screen. We compared it to the 9370, which is faster than the average competing Ultrabook with the same CPU inside, and so is the Vio. The Vio is almost as fast and is faster than your average non-overclock, shall we say, reworked, re-engineered laptop to try to develop more performance. You're still talking about Ultrabook performance here. You're still, you know, we're talking about 10%, maybe performance gain 15 at most and something. So it's not like you've suddenly got a mobile workstation, but it makes a difference. But one thing I'm going to commend them on is uh, in our benchmarks, I could see where most of the time it, the CPU cores never exceeded 80 degrees centigrade. Now that's a little conservative. If, you, if you're going to put a thermal cap, it could really go higher. 100 degrees is the allowable maximum. But Dell, on the other hand, lets it freely go to 98 centigrade, and they're not getting that much more performance out of it. And that's almost to the point of thermal shutdown, which is a little bit concerning to me and for the longevity of the laptop. So I'd rather go the VIR route and give get up more performance, a lot more, but not quite so much as the Dell with, with less alarming CPU temperatures. So if you want to go up in configurations from the base core i5 with 8 gigs of RAM and a 256 gig SSD, you can go up to a core i7. You can go up to a one terabyte SSD if you want. If you want to get something kind of beefy like a core i7 with 16 gigs of RAM and a 512 gig SSD, it's this pretty scary 1899 price tag there. I, yeah, yeah, yeah. I think that's going <laughs> to limit how many people choose something that quite that expensive. The display on this, it, the metrics on it you can see on screen are fairly good, particularly the brightness is very good at 296 nits. Gamma is good on this. Uh, the white point is pretty darn high. It calibrates pretty well, though. And honestly, to look at it, it's a very pleasing display. Again, no reflections, decent black levels, nice enough. And the only thing is you're not going to get touch. And obviously, with all traditionally designed laptops that don't have convertible hinges, you're not going to have pen support here either. So to open this up, by the way, the fingerprints here are pretty obvious on the bottom. The bottom surface does show some fingerprint oils. See all of these holes? There are a lot of screws holding this together. And here are all of those screws in a nice little tray. Guitar picks, what I use to pry around the edges once I remove the screws, you're going to do that from the front edge. And then there's going to be something different. We actually don't lift off the bottom cover after we unscrew it, but we are going to loosen the edges here. Also, there's this little door you can pry off on the back here. And that looks like a SIM card slot, though. And we'll, we'll talk about more about that when we open up and look inside. I don't know if you really have to remove this, but hey, it doesn't hurt anything, and that ensures it doesn't get caught up on anything else. So, and that just snaps right back in again. Okay, so after we have removed those many tiny Phillips head screws from the bottom and worked off the edge carefully, gently, with a, you know, guitar pick, like so, or your fingernail, don't use metal objects, generally speaking, you don't want to mar anything. Here's what's different about it. It's usually with most all laptops, you take off the bottom cover. With this one, once you've done that and you've worked it off, because of the way the hinge is designed and the way this grabs on, and because of the way they have mounted stuff, here inside, there's a ribbon cable that attaches to the keyboard, but you see what's going on here. You actually access the components from the top side. That is what's different about this. So, 
here's the very large cooling fan, our heat pipe. CPU is under here. This is probably for more heat dissipation. And it's quite effective, too. The surfaces don't get hot. There's our battery, 35 watt hour. Not that impressive a capacity, nor does it take up a whole lot of space here, but that's because they had to leave room for all the ports that they're giving you on here that you normally won't see on a 13 inch Ultrabook. Here is our SSD. It is socketed, so it's upgradable. Your standard M2 PCIe SSD, again, NVMe here. And that's a Samsung SSD. And we actually have a socketed Wi Fi card there, which is a Qualcomm Atheros card. Now, interestingly, on the bottom, there is a nano SIM card slot, a SIM card slot, but there's actually nothing that it connects to here. But notice this blank right over here. It happens to be located right under there. And I'm guessing because we have two antenna leads, if you can see that, that this is for an LTE module that they don't actually list, but it should be, in theory, perhaps possible to to get it configured that way, or to maybe try setting it up yourself if you have a little WAN card. So how about battery life? Now they claim eight and three quarter hours of battery life, and that's kind of optimistic like almost all PC manufacturers are. I find about seven hours, and that's doing average productivity work and streaming video, not going to town playing games or something like that. Not that Ultrabooks are really meant for playing games with the brightness set at about 160 nits. So yeah, about seven hours, which is actually very good considering the fact this has a 35 watt hour battery inside, which is lower capacity than average among Ultrabooks, which are pushing 45 to 55 watt hour often. Goodness only knows what they could have achieved if they had put in a bigger battery, but they couldn't because they had to make room for all of those ports. That's the selling point of this laptop. Charger that comes with it is pretty much what Vio has been using for a while, and it does have a little USB port in case you want to charge your smartphone or your tablet too, and there's a standard 45 watt charger. So that's the Vio S. It's really a very likable high-end Ultrabook for those of you who are looking for a conventional laptop. Like I said, no convertible features, no pen, no nothing like that. Not even a touch screen here. So if you're wanting a touch screen, obviously this is not going to be your beast. But uh, the price is competitive, and which means somewhat painfully high with other high-end Ultrabooks that on the market, including the Dell XPS 9370 and its nicer configuration, so on, and ThinkPads, of course, too. But hey, the, the weight is really amazing here. And the relative rigidity is impressive, too. The ports that are on here mean none of the compromises we've been going through with laptops since the whole thinification thing happened. Yet it is thin, and it is modern, and it's good looking. I'm pretty darn impressed. I'm Lisa from Mobile Tech Review. Be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel for more cool tech videos and thumbs up if you like this vid.